in uh, the post-human series, everyone is biologically immortal. I mean, they, you, you can die, mm. but, um, but only if something terrible happens to you, but you're not going to die of aging or you're not going to die of a disease. Um, and that was uh, just something that I, I actually haven't made that a really... It, it, usually if um, a writer or if a, dir a director... You know, there's that movie In Time mm -hmm. that had uh, Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake right. and Olivia Wilde was in it. I think playing his mom. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it was really interesting for the just the fact that it was science fiction that was dealing with the concept of immortality and dealing with what it would be like to have a world where people are biologically the same age as their parents mm -hmm. or their grandparents. But um, but that became it. I mean, that was it. For that movie, there was no other focus right. other than, um, and and so it was. I mean, it was entertaining and it was fun to watch. But that was that was the really the only focus. I mean, every other aspect of technology still the same. I or or it was worse. Yeah, you know, they always do this in science fiction movies. One hundred percent of them. Hmm. Just one hundred percent of them. One hundred percent of them. Yeah, I Robot. It was a great movie, but again. Like, why do we still have all these people working if the robots can do so much stuff? Right. Or or needing an inhaler for asthma. Like, right. you know, at that, that moment, that, that robot is running and Will Smith attacks him. And right. It's, uh, he's, he's got a purse. Mm -hmm. And, it, oh, he's bringing me my inhaler. But then you're sort of asking yourself, but... Why, why hasn't it been cured? Yeah. Because we've got at least human-level artificial intelligence here. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> Let's give that. why, why still all these problems? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't focus on the immortality. It's just something where if, if I'm conjuring a, a version of the future that I think is, it's, it's obviously pre singularity, but, but really close. Um, and, uh, and there, there is an, actually an artificial super intelligence in, in post-human, mm -hmm. but it's an artificial intelligence that's that's like a nanny AI. It's it's smarter than human beings, but it's a good guy, and um, and it is guiding the humans as they slowly are increasing their intelligence. So you you wouldn't say that's the singularity. It kind of slows down the singularity occurring, but that's just so that I have a world that exists and is intact, and I can create plots and characters that everyone can understand and and get a maybe a a little bit better sense of what the future could be like and what the possibilities are mm -hmm. at this point, rather than just not tackling it at all, which is what uh, a lot of writers have been doing. Um, I don't find it compelling to write stories that are, you know, spaceships and laser guns. Right. If um, I know that that's not what the future is going to be like. I, I think I read on uh, Reddit, uh, I think it was Reddit, just, someone commented on your books and said that you're one of the few just writers that write about singularity that could actually talk about it. Not a lot of science fiction books will talk about singularity or, hmm. or anything like that. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, William Gibson is a, he coined the term cyberspace hmm. and, and he's a fellow science fiction writer from Vancouver, wrote Neuromancer and Johnny Mnemonic and, uh, the Matrix is definitely his concept, but he didn't write The Matrix. Uh, but the the concept of The Matrix itself, this digital world that you could put yourself in, is is uh, is his from Neuromancer. He calls it The Matrix. But um, but I, I watched an interview in w with him from a, an old documentary from you know two thousand or something like that, and it was called No Maps for These Territories. And they asked him what what post humanity meant to him. And uh, when he described it, he was describing nanotechnology, and he was he was describing so many of the things that are actually in my posthuman series. But then they asked, "Well, why aren't you writing it?" And he said, "This is where I belong to the old guard. I can't get my head around it." Uh, and I understand that. Um, I I don't think any you know by definition nobody can get their head around post singularity, but that doesn't mean that we sort of duck our heads and um, and and don't try to deal with so many of the things that this technology is going to allow. Um, 
it doesn't mean that posthuman is my prediction of exactly what's going to happen because there's so many of these intervening events that occur that kind of push the singularity back somewhat so that we can keep having adventures with the characters. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but it's, it doesn't deny that technology advances uh, or just pretend that we're going to have a, you know, a galactic Senate or something like that. Uh, because why would we have a galactic Senate? (laughs) We got to do better than galactic Senates. Um, not to, not to say that I don't like any of those other types of science fiction. I mean, you can love star Wars. You can love those sorts of things. Um, there's nothing wrong with, I want my government to wear big hats, please. And elaborate outfits. Definitely. They always have something collars that have to go up to oh, here. They love collars in science fiction. They do. It's, the higher it goes, the better. Yeah. Cause in the future we'll finally figure out <laughs> collars. Nick, Nick aging. Yeah. Protected. Protected. Yeah. It's the, I, I do actually love those things. Like I love science fiction, uh, movies, especially you don't get enough of them. They, it would, which is silly because some of the biggest box office hits all time are science fiction. Mm-hmm. And I, and I would, I would call, uh, Avengers Infinity War and, and also Endgame obviously but like that's science fiction yeah. uh, you know people say it's uh, like oh it's a comic book movie or a superhero but it's clearly that is science fiction though mm-hmm. and um, I, I, I love that stuff it's really great um, it doesn't necessarily deal with the singularity in the best way but that doesn't necessarily mean that it sucks either no. but there's an opportunity for an incredible singularity uh, science fiction movie for sure which is why we're making dangerous to know uh, because we want to turn the the posthuman books into big budget science fiction um, science fiction movies yeah.